In the morning of March 20th, a video posted by netizens revealed significant water accumulation inside the Guangdong Shantou Bay Tunnel. Local residents reported that around 10.30 a.m., when driving through the tunnel, the water on the road was about half the depth of a car wheel, forcing vehicles to navigate through cautiously. It wasn't until approximately 3 p.m. that day that the tunnel returned to normal. According to public records, the Guangdong Shantou Bay Tunnel, hailed as a world-class challenging project, had a total investment of about 5.7 billion Chinese yuan, approximately 800 million U.S. dollars. Stretching over six and a half kilometers, it connects the north and south shores of the Shantou Inner Bay, taking over seven years to complete construction and officially opening to traffic on September 28, 2022. The construction of the tunnel was undertaken by the Municipal Engineering Company of China Railway Tunnel Bureau. Considering that the Shantou Bay Tunnel has only been open for a year and a half, the occurrence of water accumulation in this world-class challenging project has drawn significant attention. Authorities in Shantou attributed the water accumulation to a rupture firefighting pipeline at the 2400 meter mark on the west side of the tunnel, leading to a substantial influx of clean water from the sidewall. However, netizens remain skeptical, with comments questioning how a tunnel could suffer such damage in just half a year and expressing concerns about the quality of construction materials. Reportedly, this incident of water accumulation in the Shantou Tunnel is not the first mishap in Guangdong's tunnels. As early as July 15, 2021, a water seepage accident occurred in the construction section of the Xinye Expressway Shujin Shan Tunnel in Zhuhai, Guangdong Province. According to the Associated Press, abnormal sounds were heard before debris fell and water rushed in. Despite evacuation orders, 14 people were trapped and lost contact. Following the water seepage incident, extensive manpower and advanced technology were deployed for rescue efforts, ultimately locating all 14 individuals after a week, sadly confirming their fatalities. One survivor, Mr. Song, later revealed to the media that he had been haunted by the accident for two years, often dreaming of his colleagues and the perilous scene. He described the event and said, It was around 3 a.m. when it happened. Water rushed in within a short time, filling the tunnel. Initially, eight of us were on a platform preparing to exit, but four were swept away. Eventually, only after co-worker and I managed to grab onto a ventilation pipe and swim about 300 meters towards the exit, where rescue personnel found us. It is reported that the Xinye Expressway is a highway aimed at facilitating rapid travel between the north and south of the main urban area of Zhuhai, connecting with the Shenzhong Expressway and the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. China Railway No. 2 Group is a construction party responsible for the Shujin Shan Tunnel within this expressway. These occurrences have sparked widespread disappointment among netizens towards such high-profile national constructions, with criticisms directed at the government for tolerating substandard projects and playing with people's lives. However, substandard construction projects are unfortunately prevalent in China. On May 16, 2023, the Liaoning Dalian Bay Undersea Tunnel experienced water leakage, causing flooding on the roadway. Footage depicts substantial water accumulation on the tunnel floor with significant flows emanating from gaps in the left wall and water streaming down from above. At the tunnel entrance, numerous vehicles are seen hastily doing U-turns, attempting to evacuate. Water leakage in the tunnel garnered considerable attention, according to local traffic police. It was clarified that the tunnel itself wasn't leaking, rather there was a leak in the fire safety facilities on a section of the auxiliary road leading to the undersea tunnel, which is currently being repaired. Dalian Bay Undersea Tunnel Limited Company subsequently issued a statement attributing the issue to the detachment of a firefighting pipeline connection, resulting in the leakage. Public records indicate that the Dalian Bay Undersea Tunnel is touted as a key project for the national strategies of revitalizing Northeast China and building a strong transportation nation. It serves as a cross-sea passage connecting the Zongshan District and Ganjingzhe District within Dalian City, Liaoning Province, and is the first cross-sea immersed tube tunnel in northern China. Construction commenced on March 30, 2017, spanning seven years before officially opening to traffic on May 1, 2023. Ironically, just half a month after its inauguration, 
This underwater tunnel already faced leakage issues. Some netizens mocked the situation, sarcastically commenting on the tunnel's short four months warranty period and the outrageous extent of the shoddy construction, reflecting on the broader issue of infrastructure projects in China. Similar issues occurred in Zhenzhou, Hunan province. On August 29, 2021, a video titled Zhenzhou Tunnel Spews Water Like a Waterfall sparked attention. The footage showed a significant outpouring of rainwater near a tunnel in Zhenzhou. According to local traffic police, the water was due to rainfall, coupled with drainage from the Jingguang Railway above the tunnel. After heavy rain, roads near a residential area in Xi'an County, Hunan Province, experienced collapses. Many expressed concerns over the prevalence of shoddy construction projects across mainland China, ranging from bridges and tunnels to skyscrapers, often resulting in severe accidents and casualties. Data shows that due to short-sighted planning, design flaws, and issues with engineering quality, the average lifespan of buildings in China is only 30 years, which is less than half of that in the United States and one-fourth of that in the United Kingdom. Building experts have calculated that considering the approximately 18 billion square meters of existing housing construction in Chinese cities, with an average price of 2,500 yuan per square meter, the total value of assets would reach 45 trillion yuan, approximately 6 trillion US dollars. If the average lifespan of these buildings could be extended by 20 years, it could save an investment of 18 trillion yuan, approximately 2.5 trillion US dollars. Such heartbreaking incidents and substantial economic losses inevitably raise questions about why there are so many tofu dreg projects in China. Commentators point out that cutting corners during construction is a primary reason. Currently, 86% of construction projects operate under a subcontracting system where both parties sign a contract. One party provides the funding while the other party provides manpower and resources. Of course, the subcontracted party will aim to maximize profits through this process. Consequently, with numerous layers of subcontractors and various administrative fees, there is often little left for actual construction when it comes to implementation. Furthermore, in the period of reform and opening up, China's pursuit of rapid growth often resulted in expedited projects to meet strict deadlines. This drive for low-cost short-term construction has compromised safety standards. Over the years, various unwritten rules in the construction industry have become an open secret. On the other hand, observers note that despite the widespread malpractice, such behavior can persist without repercussions. An analysis in a research report suggests that behind these tofu dreg projects, there must be support from officials of the Chinese Communist Party. Furthermore, the deeper issue lies in the tragedy of the commons driven by communism in China. The concept of the tragedy of the commons originated from a hypothetical case proposed by the British economist William Forster Lloyd, explaining that individuals, in seeking their own interests, tend to overuse common goods when they discover they can profit from using them. This overuse leads to their depletion, ultimately resulting in the collapse of economic systems based on common goods. In fact, the disastrous consequences of the people's communes during the Great Leap Forward, initiated by the CCP in the 1950s, particularly the devastating famine, are considered representative examples of the brutal implementation of communism resulting in the tragedy of the commons. Under CCP rule in mainland China, private ownership of land is not permitted. Individual only possess land use rights with fixed terms, while the ownership of land belongs to the state. In such a context where individuals only hold usage rights rather than ownership, they naturally do not perceive buildings as their own property, but rather as part of the commons. This leads to various stakeholders involved in public construction projects, viewing them as opportunities to gain personal benefits which may prompt contractors or construction companies to choose low-quality materials or lower engineering standards in order to cut costs and increase profits. Although this method might lead to problems with quality, the challenges in holding public construction accountable have turned it into a breeding ground for tofu dreg projects. The accountability challenges in public construction primarily stems from administrative corruption among local CCP officials. For local officials, their performance is largely reflected in economic data, so they strive to boost local GDP figures as much as possible. However, achieving rapid development in the real economy is often challenging 
while increasing investment in infrastructure construction can quickly boost GDP. Hence, the phenomenon of excessive infrastructure construction is widespread in China. Projects with huge investments and short construction periods, often resulting in tofu drag projects, become a favorable way for local officials to achieve political achievements. Even if accidents occur after the completion of such projects, those officials who approve the projects may have been promoted to higher positions or still hold local government positions, making it challenging to hold them responsible. However, on the other hand, commentators also point out that the frequent occurrence of tofu drag projects reflects the indifference of the CCP government towards human life. Tofu drag projects are not only prevalent domestically, but also spreading worldwide through the CCP's Belt and Road Initiative. In the past decade, the CCP government has provided $1 trillion in loans to Belt and Road countries, purportedly aimed at developing economic trade and expanding China's influence in Asia. Africa and Latin America. By offering these loans, the CCP has become the largest government lender to developing countries. However, in recent years, increasing reports indicate that many large scale infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative also suffer from poor construction quality. The construction of the Coca Codo Sinclair Hydro Power Station near an active volcano, funded by China, was once Ecuador's largest infrastructure project. This concrete giant, crucial for Beijing, was attended by CCP leaders, including Xi Jinping, at its completion in 2016. Today, cracks have appeared in the $2.7 billion Coca Condo Sinclair hydropower station, raising concerns about the potential collapse of Ecuador's largest power source. Former Ecuadorian oil minister and former secretary general of the OPEC, Rene Ortiz, remarked, We are suffering today because of the bad quality of equipment and parts in Chinese built projects. In 2022, Pakistani officials shut down the Neelam Julam hydro power plant after discovering cracks in a tunnel that transport water through mountains to drive turbines. In November of that year, Tausif Farooqi, the head of the National Electric Power Regulator Authority, conveyed to the Pakistani Senate. His worries that the tunnel of the 969 megawatt power plant could collapse within four years of commencing operations. In the central African country of Angola, there were complaints about cracked walls, moldy ceilings, and poor construction quality in the Kilamba Kiashi social housing project in the capital city, Luanda, a decade after the first residents moved in. Even the airport built by the CCP in Islamabad, Pakistan experiences falling ceilings when it rains. In fact, many foreign leaders and economists criticized the Belt and Road Initiative of the CCP long ago, believing that it would exacerbate debt crises in countries like Sri Lanka and Zambia. Some projects are incompatible with the infrastructure needs of relevant countries and are criticized for potential damage to the environment. Currently, substandard construction quality in these projects. Has effectively crippled essential infrastructure, forcing these nations to incur extra expenses to address the issues in the forthcoming years. Today, these Belt and Road countries are beginning to question who benefits more from this friendship. They have received low quality railway projects, while the CCP enjoys double benefits. Chinese workers participate in the construction, and funding comes from Chinese loans. But regardless of whether the projects can operate normally, The loans must be repaid. Chinese blogger and author Li Chengpeng once wrote about tofu drag projects, saying, "There's no need to seek the truth because we all know the truth. The biggest truth here is that we know they are lying, and they know we know they are lying, and we know they are actually know we know they are lying. So now I don't care about the truth. I care about how things will play out." Li Chengpeng also sarcastically remarked, "Every time a new project starts, you know that several billionaires will be born." When the project is completed, you know that another batch of unknown temporary workers will become famous. The greatest wealth left to us by this era isn't the truth. No, that would be too straightforward. Instead, it's a relentless head scratching over what shape the next big lie will take. And when it finally emerges, the Chinese people will have the honor of turning these spectacular tales of our time into bedtime stories for future generations. What a treasure! Externally, it seems that the above summary is closely aligned with the traits commonly associated with the CCP officials and the CCP itself.